spend my days writing books, but when I've got some spare time, uh, in the past particularly, I like to write plays. Um, I don't know many playwrights who made a lot of money out of writing plays, and that's not why I do it, although I've been lucky enough to have a couple of plays on Radio 4, which have gone in, out in this country and around the world. The reason I like to write plays is because I like to be with people. Um, I, I'm a, personally a particular kind of playwriter in that I like to structure what I write to what we've got available, which makes a lot of sense to me, rather than suddenly deciding we're going to do Macbeth or Hamlet and try to do it with half a dozen people. It's a bit difficult, really. So it's easier sometimes, especially for people who are just started out acting, if we can do something that's only got a small number of people in, it doesn't last too long, so people can keep the confidence going, because it's hard at first maintaining the confidence across an hour or 90 minutes. I mean, just to give you an example, um, I wrote a, a, a one-handed play, a one-person uh, monologue play, uh, for a professional actor friend of ours who lives up in Saltburg, about Richard III, uh, and it was 90 minutes on his own on stage. Now, we're not going to expect anything like that from any of you at first, and well, probably never, actually, because what we want to do is to utilise as many people as we can. Also, following our past experience that Henry's had, that Kate's had, that I've had, we like to bring people out of themselves and maybe have them eventually doing things that they never even thought they would do. We've had people in the past, when we were up in Saltburn, who've come along, and Henry's had them in Scarborough, who've come along and said, look, um, I want to shift a bit of scenery around, I like to be here in the atmosphere, but I don't really want to do anything. And before you know where you are, they're up there on the boards, aren't they? Absolutely, doing it. and fantastic. Yeah, and, and turning out really, really good performances. So even if you think you might not want to do that, <coughs> just wait and see. You've got to be, as Henry said, willing to have a go at anything, because we may only have enough people to, to man the stage, so everybody else has to do everything else as well. So when you're not on stage... You could be carrying scenery around, you could be doing anything. But that's what pitching in is all about, and that's what makes it such good fun. And as the company grew, you looked at people's um, talents, looked at people's interests, yes. and wove them into yes. whatever you were doing. Yeah. So, I mean, even plays that you wrote, the very, very first play that I did with you, mm. the very, very first play, you practically rewrote because as we went for the first rehearsal, you thought, oh, that person, it's only a small part, but is a better actor, I've got to give them a bigger part. So you wrote yeah. that bigger part into it. And that person has a, a leaning towards the, the mournful, yeah. so I'll make it, you know. Yeah. And you, you knitted it. Yeah. You, so it was sort of a bit like a crochet thing. It sort of built it as he went along, and it changed and changed and changed. And the play that was on that particular day, when we had first rehearsal in your flat, yes. um, was totally different, or almost totally different, to the play that went out and won awards. Professional actors uh, would quite frequently say, Alan, do you mind if we change this or change that? And you can do it there on the spot, write it in, and then in the case of this company, I would then go home and make the alterations at home. So it became part of the script. So everybody can feel, by the time we put the play on, that it's their play, because they've all contributed to it. There's a wonderful French theatre company called Theatre de, de Complicité who work entirely on that basis and they virtually evolve their plays. Well, it's not really our way to, to try and evolve a play right from scratch. We, we have to have a framework to work to. We have to have direction and production. But that's no reason why you shouldn't have your two pennies. How this is going to evolve, what it's going to turn into, well, we've got no more idea about that than you have. Well, we're going on a journey here. Yes. Um, our, I would say as a director of many, many years down in our run many companies and been in and out of theatre since I was 10 years old, there's a point where creativity begins and there's a point where it actually ends. In short, you have to learn to accept direction. Yes. Um, and you think Simon Cowell's a bastard, you haven't met me. <laughs> <laughs>